Have you heard about the recent controversy surrounding the Sussex's new website? The Duke and Duchess of Sussex, better known as Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, recently unveiled their new website, Sussex.com, and it has certainly been causing a stir in royal circles. Why, you ask? Well, it's all about the branding. The website prominently features their Sussex titles and incorporates their royal coat of arms. This, in itself, might not seem like a big deal, but it actually goes against the grain of the royal family's conventions and expectations. You see, there's a directive within the royal family to avoid using royal branding in independent endeavors. Yet here we have the Sussexes, doing just that and in a very public manner. This audacious move has raised eyebrows and questions alike about the boundaries of royal titles use in personal and potentially commercial ventures. The controversy is not just about the branding, but what it represents. A challenge to established norms and the tension between public duties and private interests. Critics from royal circles have described the website's branding as gauche, implying that it could be perceived as exploiting their royal status for commercial gain. It's a delicate balance to maintain, being a royal in the public eye while also pursuing private interests. The controversy is not just about the branding, but what it represents, a challenge to established norms and the tension between public duties and private interests. This controversy shines a spotlight on the evolving relationship between modern royals and their commercial activities. It forces us to confront the question, how far can royals go in leveraging their titles for personal or commercial purposes? It's a question that doesn't have a clear-cut answer, and it's one that the Sussexes have brought to the forefront with the launch of their website. The Sussexes' decision to use their titles in this manner has sparked a debate on the evolving relationship between modern royals and their commercial activities. As we delve deeper into this issue, we find ourselves navigating uncharted waters, discussing topics that were once considered taboo. The Sussexes have certainly shaken things up, and it's safe to say that the conversation is far from over. Critics from royal circles have labeled the website's branding as gauche. But is there a double standard at play here? While some see the Sussexes' use of their royal titles and coat of arms on their new website as a clear exploitation of royal status for commercial gain, it's worth taking a closer look at the situation. The British royal family is no stranger to branding. One example is Duchy Originals, an organic food company established by Prince Charles. This venture, despite being a commercial operation, proudly flaunts its royal connection in its branding and marketing. Similarly, royal branded liquors are sold as souvenirs in the Buckingham Palace shop, capitalizing on the allure of the monarchy. Given these instances, it's intriguing that the Sussexes' decision to incorporate their titles into their website's branding has sparked such controversy. It's not the first time a royal has leveraged their status in a commercial endeavor. So why the uproar now? This criticism suggests that the issue isn't about the use of royal titles and symbols in and of itself, but rather who is using them and how. It seems that while some members of the royal family can engage in commercial activities with their titles prominently displayed, others are subjected to a different set of rules. This controversy reveals much about the royal family's views on the commercial use of royal titles and symbols. It begs the question, is the criticism truly about brand exploitation or is it more about maintaining control over who gets to leverage the royal brand and how? The launch of Sussex.com comes at a time of speculation about the Sussexes' future partnerships and opportunities. What does this mean for their brand? As we delve deeper, we find the website has been described as a one-stop shop for all their activities. It aims to consolidate their various initiatives and projects under a single digital roof. 
This strategic move is more than just a convenient solution for their followers. It signifies an attempt to redefine their public persona and professional endeavors outside the traditional royal framework. Imagine this. Your royal title, your brand, your initiatives, all housed under one digital roof. It's like having your castle in the cloud, isn't it? But this castle doesn't just represent the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. It's a statement, a challenge even, to the conventional norms set by the royal family. As we watch this digital platform evolve, we see two individuals leveraging their unique position to create a brand that bridges the gap between royalty and entrepreneurship. They are not just royals, they are entrepreneurs, philanthropists, influencers, and more. Their brand is an amalgamation of all these roles and it's growing, adapting, and thriving in the public eye. This digital platform could significantly impact the Sussex's future projects and their ability to navigate the intersection of royalty and entrepreneurship in the public eye.